Your next patient is Tom who presents with a sharp pain on the right side of the head and the eye. Today we're talking about the diagnosis and management of the most common trigeminal autonomic cephalagia, cluster headaches. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Erwin Kwan. I'm on a mission to have doctors lead a happy and fulfilling life. Cluster headache is a rare but severe headache disorder. It produces excruciating pain, often described as a sharp or piercing sensation on one side of the head in or around the eye. It is characterized by ipsilateral autonomic symptoms. These include conjunctival injection, eyelid swelling, lacrimation, nasal congestion, runny nose, forehead and facial sweating or flushing. Partial Horner's syndrome with meiosis and ptosis may be present. The duration of attack is brief and ranges from 15 minutes to 3 hours. The pain comes on rapidly without any warning. Attacks of cluster headache are recurrent. The frequency is daily and can increase up to 8 times a day. The clustering of attacks significantly interfere with daily activities. Patients find it difficult to lie still and have been described to be restless and may pace the floor. NICE classifies cluster headache into episodic and chronic. Episodic cluster headache occur in periods lasting from 7 days to 1 year and separated by pain-free periods lasting at least a month. 80 to 90% of cluster headaches cases are episodic. 10 to 20% of cluster headaches are chronic, occurring for more than a year without remission or with remission periods lasting less than a month. Timing of the headache can often be predicted as attacks typically occur at the same time of the day or night. The cause of cluster headache is not well understood. There seem to be an interaction between genetic and environmental factors. What are the triggers? Alcohol, histamine, exercise, disruption to sleep patterns, or the smell of volatile substances such as perfume or petrol may precipitate or exacerbate attacks. Assessment of headache starts with a careful history. The goal of history taking is to understand the headache, the impacts upon the patient's life and the health agenda. It is essential to assess the presence of signs and symptoms suggestive of serious underlying pathologies of headache. Examination involves cranial and peripheral nerves, fundoscopy, blood pressure, head and neck. In a person over the age of 50 years, assess the temporal arteries. Investigations are not generally required to diagnose cluster headache. In some cases, investigations may be requested to exclude an alternative diagnosis if one is suspected. The International Headache Society guidelines have suggested diagnostic criteria to help diagnose cluster headache. In order to diagnose cluster headache, at least five attacks fulfilling the following criteria. Severe or very severe unilateral orbital, supraorbital, or temporal pain lasting 15 minutes to 3 hours if untreated, headache accompanied by at least one of ipsilateral conjunctival injection or lacrimation, ipsilateral nasal congestion or rhinorrhea, ipsilateral eyelid edema, ipsilateral forehead and facial sweating, ipsilateral meiosis or ptosis, partial Horner's syndrome, a sense of restlessness or agitation, Attacks occur from one every other day to eight times daily. The headache should not be attributable to another disorder. Differential diagnosis of cluster headaches include migraine, tension type headache, sinusitis, medication induced headache, joint cell arthritis, and subarachnoid hemorrhage. How is cluster headache managed? It is important to set expectations to inform patients to be prepared for attacks. Patients should be encouraged to have both acute and preventative treatments. Offer lifestyle modification advice, for example, smoking cessation, as smoking can increase the risk of developing chronic cluster headache. Abstination from alcohol during periods of cluster headache and in chronic cluster headaches. Advice about a regular sleep routine and good sleep hygiene. For example, avoiding tea or coffee. Pharmacological management of cluster headaches include subcutaneous or nasal tryptan. For example, 6 mg of subcutaneous injection of sumatriptan would be a good initial dose. The patient can have another dose of 6 mg after at least one hour if required. If the patient does not respond to the initial dose, a second dose should not be taken for the same attack. Another route of administration is intranasally. A starting dose would be 10 to 20 mg administered into one nostril, followed by 10 to 20 mg after at least two hours if needed. Before prescribing a triptan, 
make sure the patient does not have any contraindication. Contraindications include coronary venous spasm, ischemic heart disease, hypertension, previous myocardial infarction, previous cerebrovascular accident, previous TIA, and peripheral vascular disease. Advise patient to avoid using paracetamol, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, opioids, ergots, and oral triptans. Short burst oxygen therapy is another option to manage an acute attack of cluster headache. Advice on the risk of medication overuse headache. It is important to identify and manage comorbidities that may be present, for example, depression, anxiety, and sleep apnea, as these may exacerbate cluster headaches. NICE only recommends verapamil for the prophylaxis treatment of cluster headaches. The BNF recommends a dose of 240 to 480 mg daily in 2 to 3 divided doses. Side effects of verapamil include constipation and flushing. Due to the risk of dysrhythmia with verapamil, ECG monitoring is required. Referral or discussion with a neurologist is recommended for patients who have clinical features suggestive of serious secondary cause of headache or where the diagnosis is uncertain. Or if there is presence of suspected first bout of cluster headache, or if the patient is pregnant or breastfeeding, or if there is no response to management in primary care. If you found this tutorial on cluster headache useful, then you may want to watch another tutorial on migraine. Click the video to watch it. Thank you for watching this video until the end. If you have any questions or any suggestions for future videos, please comment below. Take care everybody. Bye bye.